What's up guys, Andre here and today I'd like to take a look at the services I use and pay for to run my web apps. Now for some context, I am currently running two web apps, one for a client and one for myself. You can classify them as SaaS apps as they have users logging into them to do stuff every day. However, they don't follow the traditional SaaS model of something like monthly billing. So the client app I built is in the real estate industry and is geared towards mortgage brokers placing home appraisals for their clients. We have different types of logins for the different types of users in the system. We have brokers who place orders on behalf of their clients. We have appraisers who get assigned to orders and we have admins who oversee everything and assign appraisals. So I built this app in 2012, I believe in CodeIgniter, and then I rewrote it again in 2017 using Laravel. So yeah, it has a whole bunch of features. I wish I could show you them, but there is a lot of sensitive information in the backend. So the next app I wrote is my custom course platform for all the premium content I have. Shameless plug, if you haven't already checked out my course, check it out at usefullaravelpackages.com or codewithdre.com. So yeah, this one's pretty straightforward. Just a video player that has all the videos in a specific course. And obviously there is a paywall so you can access the courses. So it's pretty MVP for now, but I plan to continue adding features to it. So I hope that gives you enough context. I'm also primarily a solo dev, but sometimes I contract out work if I need help, either in development or design. So I'm going to be using this awesome app called Numi to list out all the services I use and their prices. It is a hybrid between a note taking app and a calculator. And you can see all the services I have listed out here. Also, I'm going to be using the monthly prices and the prices here are in US dollars. And I'm going to try to be focusing more on services that are online and not so much on software that is on my computer, although there might be some overlap here. Also, I'll try to mention any alternatives if anything comes to mind. So let's get started here. The first thing I have listed is $10.ca, which is what I use to register for my domains. So I've had no issues with $10.ca since I started using it. I don't know how long ago, maybe 10 years ago. Although one complaint I have is their UI isn't the greatest for changing DNS records and stuff like that. But other than that, they are fine. That's why I haven't had a need to switch over. Other alternatives I would recommend is Hover or Namecheap. Uh, for servers, I make use of DigitalOcean. I have a bunch of servers for my own stuff and also for my client projects. Although for newer client projects, I try to make sure that they register for their own account and I just log in and use it. Therefore, I don't have to use my own credit card. So make sure you do that. But for this project that I showed you earlier, um, all the servers are under my control, which is fine. Uh, that client is awesome to work with. So yeah, I have a whole bunch of servers. Um, this also includes backups and spaces, uh, digital ocean spaces where you can store object storage. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the price here. So for $10.ca, I have about 10 domains. They are about $10 a year. So the monthly price is about eight bucks, eight bucks. For DigitalOcean, the monthly price is about 60 bucks for all the service servers I currently have. The next thing on the list is Laravel Forge to provision servers. That is $19 a month, totally worth it as I am not a sysadmin guy, although I've, I've learned a lot just poking around in Forge. And I would think that most Laravel developers are making use of Forge. I also make use of Laravel Envoyer for zero downtime deployment. That's $10 a month. I use Automatic, so automatic.io for database backups, uh, which is great, very minimal setup, and it's $10 a month. Um, an alternative for this is Spotty's backup package, which you install as a Laravel package and you can just hook up something like Amazon S3 or DigitalOcean Spaces to do your backups. But I like automatic and I think it's worth $10 a month. Uh, what else? Style CI is a style checker, which I've been using for a while. Um, I think this is more important if you are within a team and want, a, want to keep a consistent style. Um, but I think it's worth it and it catches my errors when I push to a branch, anything that my editor did not catch. I use FreshBooks for accounting, totally worth it. I pay 15 bucks a month. It's a great service. 
for getting invoicing out. I only use it for two things, invoicing and my expenses. And then I just send it to my accountant every year uh, during tax time. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting to mention alternatives here. So I used to use something called Wave, which is free as well, which is something similar to FreshBooks. Um, but I started using FreshBooks and I like it. Uh, G Suite for custom email. I currently have two email addresses on custom domains. And it started out as $5 a month, but now it's $7 a month. So that's $12 a month. Uh, Google Photos. Um, this doesn't really have to do anything with business, but I keep all my photos on Google Photos. Uh, I used to take a lot of DSLR pictures, which are pretty big in file size, and just keeping it on Google Photos allows me to not keep it on my hard drive. And it's only worth the $5 a month, or I'm not sure exactly what the price is, but I just listed it as $5. Uh, ConvertKit for my email newsletter. Great service, kind of pricey, but it seems to be what everyone is using these days, at least everyone I follow. If you want a cheaper alternative, check out MailerLite, which I used to use. But yeah, ConvertKit is great because it has a lot of features, which I don't really use too much because as a developer, I don't like sending too many emails out. But it allows for custom forms, and that's something that the alternatives couldn't do. At least I couldn't figure out how to do them. So let me show you what I mean by custom forms. So if you go to my website, you'll see a custom form here. So if you scroll down here, there's a custom form here. And if you fill this out, then that will go into ConvertKit. Postmark app. I use Postmark for transactional email. And I just started using this for my course platform because I needed to send out the license key, which gives you access to the course. $10 a month, totally worth it, as they have very good deliverability rates. Um, I also use Mailgun as well for my client app. And this is definitely cheaper. And I've had zero issues with Mailgun, but I have heard that there have been some deliverability issues. So if you need a high deliver deliverability rate, then go for Postmark. If not, then Mailgun is great as well. Twilio, uh, for my client app, there are also text messages that get sent out um, for certain statuses, like when the order is complete. And this is, you pay by how many you send out, so it averages out to somewhere around $10 a month. Olark, if you look at the client app, there is a section here for live chat during office hours and you can chat with someone here and that's a great service for customer services customer service purposes uh, 17 bucks a month uh, for browser testing i make use of browser stack which is great it is very pricey and the price i have here is because when i do need it i i, I set up my account and then i cancel right away and just use it for the month and then when I need it again, I just reactivate my account. So I use it somewhere between twice a year when I'm like launching something to production or I need to test something on IE or some sort of mobile device I don't have. So that's why I did 39, it's 39 a month. So if I use it twice a year, divide by 12, it's around 650 a month. Uh, Gumroad is what I use for my payment processor for my course. That is $10 a month plus whatever fees they have. I believe it's 3.5% plus 30 cents. Um, they are great. I've had a good experience with them so far. Um, the main reason I went for Gumroad instead of Stripe on my course platform is because they have PayPal support, which is great. Um, I know a lot of people uh, have money lying around in PayPal and want to use that instead of their credit card. So Gumroad has integration with that. Um, for video hosting, I use Vimeo. Um, so 288 per year divided by 12, about 24 a month. And they've been good so far. The one feature that I need from them is the ability to embed only on certain domains. And I have that set in place. So you can't just rip my videos and host them on another domain. So those are the main ones I pay for. And now there's a whole bunch of free ones I use too. GitHub, it's pretty obvious. It used to be not free, but Whenever Microsoft bought them last year, they made private repos free. So thank you, Microsoft, for that. Uptime Robot is what I used for my uptime checker. 
a great service even their free account does a lot and just make sure your site is up and if it's not it will email you um, pusher for real-time notifications and web sockets I have some real-time stuff going on in the client app I showed you earlier and their free tier is up to a hundred concurrent users which I'm almost at the limit but I'm not currently paying for it so uh, an alternative to this is there is a spotty package called Laravel WebSockets, which I have a video on as well. But the downside of that is you have to host it yourself, which is not too hard, but that's a free alternative if you have over 100 users, concurrent users, I mean. Uh, Netlify is what I use to host my personal website. My personal website is just a basic static site. Um, I closed it, but... Yeah, no need for any fancy servers. Uh, just use Net Netlify, which is a great service. I'm sure you've heard of them. Uh, Cloudinary is what I use for image hosting. And they are also a great service. And their free tier is pretty generous at, I believe, 20 gigs a month of bandwidth, which I am well under. Uh, Cloudflare is what I use for DDoS protection, firewall, and caching. I have this set up on my course platform. Uh, Figma is what I use for my design tool. I used to use Sketch, but moved over to Figma recently, and they are great, and you can't argue with the free price tag. Um, Trello for productivity. I've been using Trello for years, and although I've been looking at something called Notion, which a lot of people have moved over to, moved over to I still find that I enjoy the speed and simplicity of Trello. I also use Bear for notes, which I also don't pay for yet, although these ha have uh, premium options as well. But yeah, that's what I use. And the total comes up to $257 per month. I don't pay this for two reasons. Number one, I tend to use the yearly option because you save more. And also I don't like adding monthly expenses into FreshBooks all the time. So I save some money on that. And also for the client app I run, my client pays for whatever that app needs to run. So for example, Forge and Envoyer and Automatic, he pays for all of that. But I use that as well for my own apps. So that's great. But yeah, like I said, this is the monthly fee. If you wanna see what the yearly fee is, you can just times 12 here. And you see there it is, 3,094 per year. Um, I have some other sections here. Education. The only monthly service I pay for for education is Laracast, which is 15 a month. But I make sure to always grab the Black Friday deal. So it's just like 50 a year or something. So that's like 50 divided by 12 per month, whatever that is. And other educational products, whatever Adam Wyden releases, West Boss, and also some Udemy courses. So yeah, this is definitely more than 15 a month, but I only have 15 listed there. Um, so these are mostly software. I guess I'll mention them. ScreenFlow and Alfred, uh, which I use all the time. And these apps tend to update maybe once or twice a year. And I make sure I always update them because I absolutely need these apps to run my business. Like I said, I'll do a dedicated video on the apps I use. Whenever I get a new computer, I've been saying that for years now, but I've been just using what I have here, which is a very old MacBook Pro. And the last section here is stuff I'm thinking about, but haven't pulled the trigger yet. Oh dear app is an uptime checker, which like right now, like I said, I am using something called uptime robot, but this is $5 a month and it has more features. But the main reason I want to use it is because, um, spotty made this and I've been making use of spotty packages for the longest time and I would like to support them. So that's something I'm thinking about, uh, bear, like I said. I use, but I only use the free version. But if I were to use the premium version, I would have to pay somewhere around $2 a month. And that would give me access to themes and syncing notes between computers. Right now, I only have one computer, but if I had more, I would definitely have to pay for it. Table Plus, a great alternative to SQL Pro. I think most people are moving away from SQL Pro now because they don't support later versions of MySQL and there's some bugs. So yeah, Table Plus, I'm still on the free version, but I will probably start paying for this soon. 
like I said earlier, Notion, I've been thinking about this. This can replace Bear and Trello, but I haven't really gotten around to getting used to using it yet. So Sizzy is a tool for front end dev and allows you to view your app in different mobile sizes. So you don't have to keep resizing a browser. Seems like a cool product, but I'm not doing this sort of work all the time. So that's why I haven't started using it yet. But if I did more of this work, then I would definitely consider it. And Backblaze for cloud computer backups. This is probably the most important one here as you always want to have backups. I mean, I do have a backup, but that's just physical on my external hard drive. I'd like to have a cloud backup as well. So yeah, that would add an extra 27 a month. Or if I did this per year times 12, that would be 324. So yeah, I just have to think about that and see if they are worth it. So there you have it guys, a look into the services I use and pay for to run all my web apps. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Okay, thanks. Bye.